So, hi everyone. Good evening on another Friday beginning to your weekend. And uh, this week we're very, very excited to be in conversation with Somya Shankar Bose, who you can see on the screen with me. Um, you're joining in on another session of the Offset Book to Go series. Um, every week we have um, an artist talk or a panel discussion with authors, publishers, artists, photographers, writers who've been working with the photo book. And the idea is to kind of keep these conversations open. So uh, hopefully we are going to have a very candid conversation with Somya about his work and uh, also talk about the act of publishing uh, and you know any any problems or any triumphs that he's faced under the same um, Samya as you can see on the other side of the screen uh, Samya is a photographer independent photographer um, who grew up in Midnapore but uh, I think now pretty much travels wherever he feels there is some work or a question that's inquiring him to kind of prod further into a subject. Uh, he's, I think one of the first works that I did see by Samya was the work on retired Jatra artists. Um, uh, the work was even titled Jatra and uh, mm. his current work, Let's Sing an Old Song, actually looks at a very important moment in this country's history that has not really been spoken about or acknowledged by state records, government records, or people's memory. And what Samya has tried to do is, in many ways, conduct an investigation on that work uh, by using witness accounts, by, uh, you know, by using news pieces, um, conversations with people who he's met as a result of researching this project. And actually, I let him talk more about it. Um, the project that we are going to be discussing today has been supported by the Foundation for Indian Contemporary Art, uh, India Foundation for the Arts, Magnum Foundation, uh, and the World Press Photo, right? That's a lot of support. So hopefully... <laughs> uh, so we'll hopefully the support will come as a good thing. I'm sure that is there. Hopefully you'll also be able to talk about... Um, how this support has helped in very tangible ways also, you know, during the process of research and execution of the work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the talk show. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ansika. Like, I was watching this series of Koktego, like from the very beginning, like when Rahit and other people, like, I think Rohit was in the first Rohit was series, the, right? yeah, he was in the first, he, yes. He, uh, so like fantastic, like all the photographers, friends from India, mostly, and also like Pakistan and other places, like from right. subcontinent mainly. It's so interesting. Thank you so much for inviting me. And this is like the first book and the first the book first launch. Book on the first book even. <laughs> yeah, the first book event, like after the book is ready. Yes. <laughs> we did a couple of talk, but then the book was not ready. Only we talked about the work, not about right. the book. Like we are mainly we talked about the process like how we are making the book and all but now like this is the now first, you made it uh, the book is in my hand yeah yes and just That's came back from delhi <laughs> yeah <laughs> just came back from delhi after printing and all yeah so uh, should i start like yes from, i think about it would the be project? nice to yeah i think it would be nice to to give a little bit of a historic i mean a context to the work and how the work started and I think the best way to do that maybe somewhere is for you to actually talk to us about this massacre that a big part of this country does not know of and even outside, you know, by default then. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think like, uh, uh, though we, like a major part of Indian people, we don't know about this massacre, but we all know about the partition history and the problems and like the people who came from Pakistan after partition and the people who actually went to Pakistan after partition. The same thing, like I am saying Pakistan because in 47 it was Pakistan. The Bangladesh right. name came from 71. Yeah. Uh, and the problem actually started from there was because of the political turbulence and they like suddenly in a very like short time period they divided the country in two, three right. parts and then people suddenly became homeless in their own homeland. Like, just because of their religion or caste and this kind of 
problems like mm-hmm. um the, like that same place or same neighborhood they like live for like 60 years or 70 years 70 years and then suddenly realize after 47 15 hours that okay this is not my country anymore i have to go to india or i have to go to pakistan like vice versa right uh and from then actually all these problems started like so when this first start coming to india after 47 partition when you say when they first just to kind of clarify we're talking about uh, refugees that were coming from the pakistani yeah, side yeah but i don't like i don't prefer actually though like it's a right word to understand but i like beginning i don't love the word refugee because like as how we see the refugee problem in middle east and other part but this is not a problem because it's a kind of they had their own home right they are forced to go just because of their religion because they right. divided the country in for only two like a muslim they can live here the hindus they can live here right mm-hmm. and mainly for bengal like they divided the bengal the west bengal part in pakistan and right. sorry east bengal part in pakistan and west bengal like remained as west bengal right but it was bengal before like 1910 sometimes like when they divided mm-hmm. the bengal so uh, they came i think it's better to use the bengalis okay. uh, who actually came because these people are not like a refugee that they are they want to travel like what happened right. with rohingya and all because they actually can live there but as because um the government and they're very confusing situation like if the pakistani government will support them or not the indian government will support the muslim as well and i think the still this problem is with us and we always right. use this in our politics and that is actually the biggest problem still now right. and that's why this work is still con- like this incident is still contemporary for me because we should talk more about it so when these people start coming the government gave them up um refugee relief certificate which is like inside the book so right. basically this Can you certificate just, uh, go closer in for us ha huh. so asani ji yeah perfect huh. so Thank this you. is basically a city certificate so if you see the certificate it is mentioned that you will be settled outside of west bengal assam tripura not in any bengali region you have to live in a central refugee camp which is provided by the government and uh when they are actually coming so mostly uh, didn't get time to carry all the documents like their documents in bangladesh with the government now asking for they only had this because lots of them didn't have the passport right because they are living their own country till like 15th august mm-hmm. it is not like they are living in syria and they want to move to us it's not like that they are living there in their own country and suddenly right. they realize Okay, the country is now two different country. It's more like we are living in Delhi, and suddenly you're like, okay, right. Delhi is a different country now. Now, like, what do you want? You want to in, go to India, or you want to remain in Delhi? Right. So that is why, like, the refugee word for me is in this particular situation um, is a bit complicated to say. Uh, so what happens? So they came with this refugee certificate when they are crossing the border. This is the only documentation they had. Uh, and then they shifted to the rocky island in central india the problem is if all these people like who are 60 70 years old or 50 or something like 40 whatever like in different ages they right. only know the one language because they are coming from a very remote village because the upper class and upper caste people who move they settled in calcutta or two small towns like um, siliguri bardhwan and all and then they the rest part like the lower middle class like my family they also come from bangladesh and shifted to midnapur like which is the near right. the sea side part and all and the rest the lower class who came later like 50 55 56 71 this time the government gave them the shelter so most lower caste people bengali people without knowing the language and without knowing the geographical area they were shifted to a rocky island forest area in malkanjiri okay. the central refugee camp and when they right. shifted um is border in andhra pradesh and odisha so if mm-hmm. if they want to do business how you can do a business who don't the, know the language local language mm-hmm. the major people who came from jashore and their profession was either farming 
or fishing. This is actually the major profession in Bangladesh, also in the villages area, either farming or fishing. But the rocky island where they sift it is not at all like for farming. Yes. The land is not at all for farming and no option for fishing. Mm -hmm. So the government used to give like one rupee as a ration and all. So this is also in a page like some in the book. Um, so where like the a kind of this ration card. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. The ration card. So every family used to get like it. The date is also mentioned here, the 76, 75. Like every year they used to get for one kilo per month something for the entire family. What is like now the Bangladesh government is giving to Rohingya people who came there. Right. And for how many days they can do that? And it's going on for 50s. So you and don't have a problem. The infrastructural support that was being built along. The infrastructure is basically they gave one or two cows. So few goats and a small land and tents that's it and um, the and there are also some problem would happen with the people who are already there like in Odisha right. and Andhra Pradesh because they are the local people so they are also not welcoming these people. The government like the problem is they never planned properly they put mm -hmm. everyone together and this fighting start problem and in the meantime the that time the communist party government not the government the communist party of india they actually visited these people many times and asked that okay if we come to the power if people can come to bengal this mm -hmm. is the confusion actually started so these people start believing if the communist party will come in power then they will get a chance in the meantime the other government parties is also like even if in that time the power in the central government the congress was not like Doing good and the Janata Party, who actually later merged with BJP. This party was also um, actually every party tried to, these people mostly lower caste, non educated, they actually tried to take advantage from these people and giving them false promises. So, when the government, the CPM government came to the power in 77, so these people um, thought, okay, um, I think this is the time, let's go to West Bengal. Right. And let's settle in that Sundarbon area um, named Morichapi. Right. So there was a leaflet which was distributed in that time. So the English translation of that was uh, as the insert in the page. So this leaflet, hand written leaflet, was distributed. And then people started more like a WhatsApp. This year, like a hugely traditional WhatsApp. Yeah, traditional WhatsApp. And they got this leaflet. And I'm still don't know. It's difficult after 40 years to understand like if this was a fake or if it was like intentionally done and all. Because Shatish Mandal, who was the leader and the name mentioned, as I know, he 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 didn't know that how to sign. But there was already a signature you of Shatish Mandal. He was uh, he was not literate to sign. No, he was not literate because what I have read, he was not literate at all to sign. He used to give the hand. Thumbprint, yeah. That. Uh, but in this leaflet, this like. Shadish Mandal signed as the Shabhaboti, okay. I mean the secretary of the Utpastu Nayanchil Shomiti. And they came to West Bengal, the Morinchapi area from 77. And the government was not at all welcome then, like they were not ready. The new government like just developed. And then with the government and these people, like a so, like, problem started happening from the very beginning. Central government. Donata Party Muraji, this was a prime minister in that time. He said, like, I'm not going to give any support to the state government because uh, that is also mentioned in a booklet, like Jyoti mm -hmm. speech, that I'm not going to support to anyone because um, these people are the citizen of India, not citizen of West Bengal. And we have already signed them from that uh, document, that refugee right. certificate, that uh, we are not giving any place in West Bengal, Tripura, Ashan. So okay. you will not get any funding for these people to settle down in West Bengal. So it is like not only one government problem, it's like entirely all the it's parties actually tried to yeah. come. It is like unplanned problem for all the government because they didn't know they invited the partition, they did the partition, but then they didn't know what to do with the people. Hmm. It was a huge people, they couldn't give them the uh, proper 
work there in Malkangiri, so they didn't have the money, so they are already dying there, starving because there's no food, rocky island, and they are not happy to with the life at all. The language is difficult for them because a 60 years or 70 years old person, how can I ask them to learn the language in next one and two years and do a new profession? Right, absolutely. It's totally difficult. Yeah. So this is like started from the very beginning and finally in 78, 31st January, the government and with the local party guns, they like um, went inside the village, in the island, in right. Morinchapi Island and start openly fired and killed like, people like we don't know the count, like it's like Many academics say it like, can be 2,000, 2,000, many say 200, 300, but government never accepted any people they died. No verified numbers or accounts. That no you... verified numbers. Like whatever we have done is basically the people we made and asked and made a like documentation of the people who are missing, which actually we dedicated every page. So the book is started basically for the people who departed, not died because we also don't know because it's basically these people are missing from that day. Right. Because the body was not found. And then in every page in the right side, you will see one name. One name right. basically is dedicated to them. Okay. Uh, so we have found around 60. So it's basically the book is 130 pages. So divided okay. by two, like the person we have, so the, we also made the page number according to that, like how many numbers we have found after 40 years. If we did this research in a 78, 79, then it was different. The data would have been different. Absolutely. Yeah. And the government, many academies said like it can be like 2000, 2000 also. Many people died by starving because the government did a three months economic blockade from the island. It is the last island where the people live. Uh, Kumirmari and this island now under forest, like um, Tiger is a forest, but um, it's basically the tiger is a forest and the rivers and the ocean star. Like the so that's pretty much the, the last bit of civilizational it, land that was huh. possible. Right? Yeah, I can say. And right. that is also easier for the government to kill and throw the body. And also keep numbers obscure because, you know, anyhow, like geographically, this is so separated either way. Uh, you know, separate, Sundarbans in yeah. itself an area that doesn't have exactly and if you float the body in the river so it's going to the ocean so it's very difficult to track right uh, so people have seen bodies um, like rivers like the crab hunters or honey collectors they say like from the other island they say like they have some bodies and like different like more than like next three four months uh like, there were spottings you know, of bodies too. body part or something yeah and also found like when they're hunting the crab, like inside the mud, right. they have right. found the body part. Right. So um, uh, then like uh, it's all uh, the government actually destroyed all the documents in the last 40 years because the same government was in power till um, like 2000, huh, 2000, really like, like 10 years back on. Hmm. So that is why they already got like more than 20, 30 years, right? right. To destroy everything. Every okay. document related with this incident. I'm going to interject here, if if you don't mind. Uh, some, sure, uh, you know, just to kind of contextualize. So we we know that there is this entire history now. We know huh. that there huh. is a history which is about a mass relocation of people owing to, uh, you know, uh, how partition happened within uh, the division of India and Pakistan, and then later it became, you know even between Pakistan and then Bangladesh kind mm -hmm. of, you know, which I know impacted mm -hmm. uh, Bengal altogether in a very different way. And, and that history has not obviously been spoken about as much. One, one mm -hmm. does hear more of stories from the Punjab uh, coming into this context. And, but the interesting bit is that over here, it's almost like they were not just relocated, but they were kind of contained on this island, uh, which was completely unsuitable for for them to sustain in any format whatsoever. And uh, how, I mean, these reports of the firing that do exist, right? Um, is, is there any accountability taken for the firing reports? Does it come down to uh, anyone taking responsibility or being witness to who can be kind of brought in 
to i don't know to do a research or to do yeah so mostly like i followed um, four researchers uh, main research paper which is done in 90s 89 okay. Okay. and in 2000 and 2004 or 5 like on by rashmali okay. and anu jalvi so these are the academics like very important academics who did their research a long long it is like 800 pages 900 pages research on this particular massacre and the partition history so the entire book is also like depending on the because i'm not person academic so i can't take that risk or responsibility to say that okay these people died and all and without Absolutely. doing the research because it's not part of my job because i'm i'm an artist so i'm just like trying to understand what happened by reading those research papers right and this research uh, researchers i collaborated like with rash malik and anu um so both of them did a like a long very intense research and anu also anu's research is part of the booklet also inside the right. book right um and also mentioned in the end in the book like uh, sorry uh, and i don't know i think it froze for a split second i i don't know what happened oh, okay okay but okay. i just i wanted to move from there like you said you know like of course there is there is research that was mm -hmm. accessible in very restricted spaces it's not information that was it's out it's basically there. academic research and Absolutely. it's also for me is a kind of like also the academics also in the similar way like it is only for the academics reads the academics research paper because right. nobody reads the 800 pages and it's only available in like either in a research uh, magazine or in like university libraries right so i wanted to move from there into the factors that led you to kind of follow this up as as huh. a photographic you know um, i don't want to say it's a project because i feel like you know sometimes the the intensity required huh. is probably more huh. you know more than what the word project might entail hmm. but hmm. you know it kind of put you on this journey let's say to investigate further and then you know uh, to pick up from from what you just said uh, mm -hmm. is that in in many ways also with the work you're not trying to do this research right you, that's not part of the profile uh, you are kind of responding to this as an artist right if, if mm -hmm. i have i got that right and so in that dynamic i mean if you can take us through you have volumes of research in front of you right mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it would be data based and imagining engaging um how do you then at that point of time kind of pick up this research and approach it from as as someone who's going to be kind of photographing the issue you know um i know the work is also something that you have been kind of uh following for for about 2 years i think it took you to more than uh, yeah it's like right. on the 4 years 4 to 5 years 4 years okay the yeah. i think when we met last with that was uh with the first in middle like i already started making photographs yeah two years back i think yeah Later. right so i'm i'm curious to know as as a photographer then how do you approach this uh, are there particular methodologies are there particular mm -hmm. visual tools that you choose to kind of pick up in the creation of the work and mm -hmm. and i'm going to layer one more question within it uh, to ask you at that point and at that stage um, did the idea of the book come right at the beginning of of the work and the research itself or is that something that happened over a period of time once mm -hmm. the work was closer to being uh, mm -hmm. completed okay so the first is basically um, i started this from 2015 like start working like reading the research paper and other regional uh writer who also wrote about this incident and all and collecting news paper and because the every work like i do the research review the jatra work like finding the people is basically the most difficult job like part of this right. work because these people not live in a singular place like in a small village can go and meet them like they are now after 40 years they moved like in a different part of india so it's same for jatra so the thing is that all my work is uh, related in a one word is either it is about the desire or about the memory like i try to uh, sorry like, either about desire or or the memories okay like it's mm -hmm. jatra is the same thing because it's someone like they are telling about their glorified past like when they are very famous actors and now nobody like think about knows about them mm -hmm. and then reimagining their past right so i think this work is also same the reimagining of the past 
and how like people want to remember their memories in what way like you want to see them as their heroes of their memories or do you want to see show them as a victims of their memories in their mm. memories mm. Uh, when someone is telling a story i believe like uh, when i am listening after 40 years of renaissance jatra work or this work uh, it's not the exact incident anymore it became the fictional past though right. the reality is there the fact is there but it's fictional because it's coming from a one perspective and then like 40 people are i'm meeting or 100 people i'm meeting they are telling their perspective about a particular incident right so i'm pretty much sure after 20 years uh, your version of corona time and my perspective of corona time and my friend whose father died just two days back because of corona his stories about corona after 40 years totally will be different Absolutely. right so different so so the first the very beginning like it's to that like what i am showing it's basically partly fictional and partly basically the reality and i always say that so there will be no confusion because my book is i wanted to make it as a book from the very beginning because there is no proper book or documentation of this incident so if i don't do now and then like it is already 40 years the so people like who are 40s in that time they are 80s now so 30s in now So after twenty years, someone go. Then, like there will be only who are ten years or six years hardly had the memories of the incident. Right. So for me, I thought like it's important not only for the artists, also for the academics or researchers. But it is like we should make a book from this work. Otherwise, we we'll lost because exhibition or any kind of uh, like a by part um, editorial publication, it is just keep a, like a one. part of the work not the interval mm. and if you right. see the book the book is not only the images like this book we also try to make in a reading like there is lots of conversation is going to which actually i did with the collaborators i mean the survivors right. so the survivors and me were conversing and talking about the memories and i trying to understand and trying to perceive from their memories that what happened with my family when they came back and the stories i have heard like they had a house and came back and the struggle i think this is actually the interwork on the book right that a generation who born like late 80s or 90s and the incident happened before them and how we want to remember about this partition history because we will not be able to understand what the struggle was there in 47 or the 71 war right mm mm-hmm. but only we can try to understand our time or try to relate with other incident that maybe this can happen and this not so this is how also the reenactment happened in the work right um, there there is a many things like i reenacted in the shundar mostly in the areas near the morichapi island because morichapi island will not be able to enter so the inter work the images except the portraits of the people who portraits mainly have taken in the central part of india mm-hmm. and the images like the landscapes and the reenactment pictures i made in the sundarban delta areas so basically okay. i listened them uh, in central gram came back to sundarban and try to find the location where we can make a picture which is somehow related with their memories and it is a very similar process i also did in jatra but i did the jatra mainly portraits but okay. there i work with the space and also with the portraits right. which is like in this book right. and also the text the conversation right i so, want to talk yeah. about this treatment to uh, you know this idea of kind of reenacted portraits that are actually reflective of uh, of an individual's memory or a collective memory in that sense are very Uh, they're very prominently there in in all the three works of yours that we have seen. You know, whether it's Jatra, uh, whether it is the ongoing work on the queer community, whether it is the work on the on the massacre right now, and uh, you know, I'm I'm curious to know for you, you know, for for your for your photographic practice, not just for these particular projects. Um, it seems that that is. sort of an aesthetic or that is kind of like a visual approach that has an echo with how you look at photography even uh, you know mm-hmm. to a certain degree i mean this is how and this could be completely my reading and i could be off on it 
but in many ways mm -hmm. it allows for the basis and the foundation of a conversation to be embedded in in a historical moment or in a moment you know that has a certain gravity in in your life and then your reenactments allow you to also kind of fictionalize it to a certain degree even for yourself you know what you were talking about um however if i can come to this book and i think it might be nice for those who are here with us right now to also see some pages of the book if you can mm -hmm. uh, share your screen with us then you know um, we can see some of the spreads there. okay okay so before sharing screen, just like two minutes just to give an idea like uh -huh. how i work uh, i think like uh, films are the major influences in my work because when i was growing up like the only source because i brought them in midnapur so my only source to the outer world was the books uh, and the films and this right. books is basically helping me to imagine about the outer world and the films actually help me to make the visual so when i start working as a photographer these two things actually merged in my work because books are telling the stories of the real people and let you think imagine about the character Like if you um, just give a small example, like if you like those way like a Hinduistic thing, but still like if you example take a, like mm -hmm. uh, Ramayan, and if you read in a like four years, five years old, and listen Ramayan from your grandparents, so automatically you start thinking like, okay, Dasarat maybe looks like Ganpa or someone. Right, right, right. And this visual reference we all take from our surroundings, like what we have in our head, in our visual archives, and I'm seeing the film. So in my work. I love to watch films, but I the only thing I don't like in the film is that the heroes are not the real heroes; they are like someone acted. So I, when I work, I try to put the real heroes who are acting their own memories. Okay. And this is actually Jatra. This is also this work and Full Moon. All the work that you see is basically they are acting their own lives. So there, that is why it takes too much time, and I only consider one work particularly at a time, like. Mm -hmm. For four or five years, I do research and do workshop, and then work because these people not everyone is actors, so they don't know how to act. It takes also time to, you know, kind of a phase like how to act in front of a camera. But I love because when you're seeing someone as a hero, and then you also realize, okay, this is the person actually who are telling this story, and this is telling their story, her story or his story, and these things I love. Because they are the heroes of their own story. So let me share the screen so that I can. You can yeah. also ask me. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious about particular... when these shoots happen. Then, do you consider yourself a director of these shoots in some way? Yeah, I think I see myself as director, cinematographer, everything. <laughs> everything. The person okay. is basically my collaborator, actor. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Right. Uh, what like I actually, what I wanted to ask you in terms of. you know when direction comes in is mm -hmm. that are you then in many ways even directing them uh, to the location to what moment out of their memory you would want them to remember at that point of time uh you know uh, are those things that are i mean one can't obviously okay. script it right to the you know to the last mm. point but just in order to kind of understand the the yeah. nature of collaboration yeah. that comes sure. into play so what i do like we first do a long conversation for weeks and once mm -hmm. the conversation is done then i start like doing transcribing and then from the transcription i start like me and my collaborator start like getting okay this part of the transcription i think is very interesting because when we speak about certain memories after 40 years we speak so much things and we get so much things not everything is possible to come with the visuals Right. and then we select a particular part from the transcription part of the interviews or the discussion not interview like a discussion i say mm -hmm. and then from that part we start finding location and then also conversing what do you think how we can do this and then we after a certain kind of like a two weeks or three weeks discussion in a point when they also think okay this is i think the right time to make the picture because if you see the picture is also gives you some confusion is it reenactment or not because few images seems like reenactment few images mm -hmm. doesn't look like a reenactment and this confusion actually i love because this is also part of our life because we all act like either we are acting like a artist acting like a daughter son 
and every time you're acting is basically a part of it is basically the real me and the part of it is basically i am trying to act like a perfect daughter or perfect son or perfect partner perfect bookmaker perfect artist but nobody is perfect for me like nobody is perfect but we all are trying to make a perfect thing which is also coming in my work like we are trying but also you have to be sure from the very beginning that this is not a reality is all we are trying and as you say and for for photography i think it's the thing like we always believe in photograph not the film films like we emotionally fall with it for films but we always know that these people are acting for someone they are not right. real but the photographs we always believed because photography started from the journalism from the history like and when the history it, of being of, that huh, evidence in first world war second world war yeah like all the people even like in my work like you say that uh, mm -hmm. so there is a pictures of violence but i don't personally want to put a person who already faced a of violence in their life i don't want them to put in a same position again after right. 40 years so that is why i love to reenact those parts so i can tell the stories but they are also not tortured right right so these are like again he's a real survivor who lost his families during the massacre they split it and there is no phone so after like many years and it's already mentioned in the text in the right left side and Yeah, after much time, I said they got like after thirty years, they reunited in a Orissa village to found their entire family together. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and is one of the missing person. So one uh, survivor told me like he actually hidden under the leaves in the forest for days, and like. Hide it so that after the police left, they only came out after that. Like it's like mm -hmm. almost two three days they hide it under the leaves in such like a dense forest. So these are the things like reenacted. But again, like this person is a real person, a survivor, and still has that bullet wound in his right leg. Right. And also he's part of the reenactment. So right. uh, this fiction and reality is coming in the book. because when i am also listening i also don't know what exactly happened because i'm only right. listening meeting uh, 50% of the survivors because who are at that time the leaders of the movement like 50 or 60 years old they already died like they've not yeah long back ha huh? so you can't say this is exactly happened you're just telling these people's memories what they are still want to remember about the incident what they actually don't want to remember this hmm. wanting and don't want this is actually this work like what i want to remember about our past and what we don't want to remember about our past okay. and the book is basically what we want to remember and the rest is basically what we have to imagine when we are reading the text that the part we don't want to remember very similar to how you used to read your books when you were in the nagpur as a child when you yeah. say it's, it's in front of you but the rest of it you kind of begin to imagine exactly um, exactly exactly i do want to ask you you know in terms of as we are kind of going through the uh, pages of this book uh -huh. uh, they are you know visually speaking they are it almost seems like different chapters that are kind of running parallel to each other there is of course you photographing mm -hmm. the landscape you doing portraiture uh this reenactment uh there are also images that you have taken out of uh, people's archives there is archival mm -hmm. material and there is the narration of a text but more from uh like this like this page is actually an ideal page to kind of stop at um uh, where you have the narration of a story which is told to you by a survivor and then you have this timeline that one is running through uh, you mm -hmm. know uh, that that's kind of in some ways maybe your uh, your visual analog you know your visual mm -hmm. diary your visual log mm -hmm. of, of what it has been to research this project mm -hmm. um assimilating all of this together into one book where there can be uh, 
a, a comfortable flow of understanding and reading uh, the work itself can often be very difficult. And I know that, uh, you know, even earlier this year when we had met, there were ways that you were looking to kind of bind it together um, mm -hmm. stronger and things of that sort. Uh, how do you kind of, how do you figure out in, in your particular case, how did you make this decision to kind of integrate all of them? Very often you see that, you know, the towards the end of a project, like one begins to filter the stuff out and says, okay, maybe what I'll use in the book is just this one element, but you know, you've, you've continued to draw these parallels at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that was very important to you right from the beginning? Is this mm -hmm. something that came in as a suggestion from the designer? Um, I know to a large degree, I think uh, the design has been you and your partner. I know mm -hmm. Bernali has joined us in the chat today yeah, as a part of this. Um, and it would be, I mean, it'd be nice to know what were the factors you were thinking about when, you know, the work was there, you realized the work had come up to a point where um, you felt it was ready to be put out uh, into the mm -hmm. world. And then the process of the book began. Uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'm just curious to know this decision to kind of continue with these different visual languages, different aesthetics, different elements all coming together. Uh, how did that kind of take form? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I think from the, as I said, like upon the very beginning, like we thought about the process of the book. Mm -hmm. Like last five years, like when we are collecting from the archives from the very beginning, like like to start thinking how we can make it as a book, yeah. and um, we also thought about that we will not make a book just a photo book, like just photos, photos, and photos, because it's sometimes like a readers, like from academic perspective, who also want to read something, right. um, or some like you know like what happened, like we often make a photo book and we only photograph which is important, right. strong, but particularly for this work, I think we also need some of um, context of the incident from the survivors also. Right. So that is why we, we thought like after 80 hours, 19 hours conversation, and then we transcribed and then we actually selected a part from it. Mm -hmm. And it's more like a journey. I think this book is like for the four years what happened when I was traveling and what kind of actually we discussed before making the picture. So book is basically, for me, is basically a diary. Like, uh, right. So like a kind of a conversation we did and then we made a picture. So when you read, sometimes you also realize, okay, this picture actually, maybe this conversation happened before and then this picture was made. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I listened to those conversations in Mana camp or central part and then came back to Shundarbon. So like right. things are actually I am carrying inside my head like this conversation I did last week. Hmm. I am now trying to make a picture from this conversation. So I thought why not, not the entire part, just part of the conversation just to put inside the book. Hmm. So when the readers will read, they will go through a journey not only just seeing the beautiful images. Right. right. Uh, and in this particular page, if you see the left part is basically is from my own brother, which happened last year. So when I am doing this work, there's multiple things which has happened in my own life and how I'm trying to relate with the incident when I'm listening. When someone oh. told me like a bullet wound and when my brother actually lost his leg and I'm trying to get the feelings of that incident when someone is telling from through my brother's incident mm -hmm. because it's a very similar incident but in two different time period one happened in 79 and one 2019 and those what I also put put inside the book so that uh, this is kind of uh, it's kind of I am also trying or pushing myself to understand uh, the pain like the pain they actually carrying inside their head. It's maybe not as like, it's nothing similar with their pain with my pain, but how I am like, what I say, like in a new generation, people are trying to understand that partition problem and the pain and their problem and their struggle now and trying to relate with their parallel incident happening in their own life. So there are multiple layers, I think, inside the book, which actually Bonnie helped me because she's, sorry, Bonnie, She's a filmmaker, 
uh, an editor, mainly editor. So she works with many filmmakers. So she knows how to work with footage, like a 200 hour, right. 300 hour footage, and then coming with you know two hours film. So I think it was also experiment for us because an editor is designing a book. So when you will see the book, so you will also get a uh, you know, part of a filmy effect because I am also very much inspired from the films which, which you can see in the visuals, mm -hmm. like reenactment part is most painful. So I think this is somehow worked for me. Mm -hmm. Now, like viewers will say how it is coming for them in the book. But that but, we have no control over. <laughs> like I, yeah, I know it's not control, but yeah. So but we actually wanted to do this experiment. But for me, like artists, we always should uh, the artist life is for me is basically a journey in a learning and unlearning process. It's not like have to make something perfect in a one book. Maybe what I'm thinking perfect in this book after 20 years, I will design or born, born early will design in a different way. Possibly. Because, right. Yeah, because times change. Like in 20 years, so many things will change in our life. We will see the things because we'll be in our 50s. Then we will see the incidents in a different way. Because right. when you're in 20s, we are not thinking about date. We are not thinking about losing someone. But when you're in 50s, so you already lost many people in our life, like mm -hmm. our parents, maybe, or maybe not. But right. in 50s, 60s, if we see our mothers, so they already lost their close one. And when you are 70s, 80s, like I am only the living person and I have already lost the 90% of, of our friends and other people. Right. And when I will see then the work, definitely the perspective will be different. Right, right. No, yeah, the emotion will be different. So that's why like, I think artist for me is basically the journey. That every 10 years, it, will, it can be changed. Like when you do the second edition of the book, definitely we'll do something differently. Right. But right. that should be like, that is why we're making book, limited edition book. It's not a literature book like we're making now. 10,000, 20,000. So limited 600 and then again, second edition we can maybe, maybe I will do with the same thing or maybe we will change if the time also changes with us, right? Right. And yeah, I'm just going through the book quickly. So these are the people who are missing and collected from different archives, newspaper, uh, uh, personal collection uh, who lost their dear ones and then like, um, like the image quality is not good so when we zoomed. Right and put in the book and then so you can see the names in the right hand in every page. Right. This is like I was mentioning and also the English translation, the, all the insert is basically, most of the case is not the photograph. I didn't want to, yeah, I wanted to talk about the insert yeah. as well. Before we go there, I know we've kind of been talking for a bit, so I just yeah. wanted to uh, put a little note saying that uh, we will be addressing questions in another couple of minutes. Um, so any of you who might have any questions or anything that you might want to say to Shomo, um, there's a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please address your questions there and we'll pick it up uh, as soon as we have a look at the book. Yeah. Uh, so, so the insert. Huh? Talk about the inserts and, uh, you know, maybe even in the book, uh, you know, in the screen that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's the insert section comes in, so if we can probably, uh, you can show us that page and, mm -hmm. and talk about it, that would be nice. Yes. So the insert is actually uh, coming in the book in three, three inserts. Basically one is here. The insert is not actually, uh, it is part of the book, um, but you can also uh, think it as an individual because it's not a photograph or anything. This here, the insert is basically the English translation of the of these two leaflets. So, so for the people who can read Bengali, they don't need that insert. So they can put it out and put inside the box. And that is why we made actually the box. Right. And so they can put inside the box and they can go through because there are many parts in the book which is in Bengali, mainly the archives. Mm -hmm. So the translation part we have put in English and then there will be a booklet in page number uh, something. Little. Yeah, one. yeah, here. Yeah. So there will be a booklet here, which is basically Anu's uh, detailed research about the massacre and also Jyoti Boshu's perspective, his speech in Vidhan Shabha in 79. 
So I transcribed Hubohu, like what he okay. said. As is. And yeah, as it is. And then translate it. So people, if someone like from an academic perspective wants to know more details, they can actually wrote that. I think it's almost 32 pages to 30 pages booklet. There's a okay. detailed research documents and everything like in a text format so they can get to know about more details what happened. In many ways, and that, that insert is kind of like the core crux of the historical aspect of Exactly, of the exactly. History. I'm curious to know why why this was a separate insert and why, I mean, you know, it's an insert that even comes, I mean, it's not attached to the book, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, so I was curious to know why you chose to to separate that element from, from the book as well. Uh, okay. So the book is already, if you see the book, except the booklet. So mm -hmm. it is already the conversation is going throughout the books with me and my collaborators and the images okay. we are coming with my collaborators. So the book is entirely um, how like the journey is going through from last like five years. And if you see the days, it's more like a diary note, like okay. uh, when I'm meeting them and there's like expert from the diaries notes, like it's 156 and there's no linear thing. It's okay. 156 and then it's 117. Right. Okay. Um, so, uh, the main, like the booklet person is basically the details not about the incident, but not the conversation with me. So if we put the booklet, I mean, Anu's research inside the book, then it will be more confusing for the readers because we're already going through a parallel conversation right. within the images. And then again, something coming up with a, like a 30 pages mm -hmm. incident. Because for okay. me, um, if you now we are living in a life like we always have this smartphone with us. So even if okay. we don't, if we need to know something about any incident, we can Google search, and there are lots Absolutely. of newspaper and like uh, text and all. Hmm. Uh, but this research, these two research is also important in the end because we always wanted that we'll go through the conversation, and then at the end of the book, people will get to know about the incident properly which will be in the page 113. Mm -hmm. But they can also curate it when they're giving, like if a Bengali is reading this book, they don't need this text because they already know about the massacre. They heard from their parents or so. If my age, if like if it was 40 or 60 years old, they already know about this. Mm -hmm. So they don't know this text. They can go through the book. They can give someone the book without the booklet because okay. the person also know about the incident. They just want to go through the journey of the collaborators and me and how I, we are trying to understand what happened. Mm -hmm. But for a person uh, from Delhi, mm -hmm. they can also talk about the incident and then they can read. And also you can cure it. Like you can put the booklet in the beginning page, the first way. You can change it. It can change in the beginning so that when you are giving book to someone, they can read the incident first. Like a person from okay. outside of India, they can read the book first, takes first, and they can start looking the images, but the text, the booklet is always, there's a two separate things. The booklet is basically the research note, the details note about the incident, and the book is- Your response. After, exactly, my response or my perspective, how I am perceiving uh, the inter incident as an artist after um, reading those incidents in a book. So when you are reading the book, you can also, participate in the book and thinking about the images. So there's a two perspective. One, when you don't mm -hmm. incident and when you know the incident entirely and start imagining the space mm -hmm. uh, and the names who died and the conversation. And sometimes you will see the person in the conversation and sometimes you will not. And end of the book, you will get a note where actually um, you will also get to see who are the persons like Shum right. Shumaj, who are also part of the conversation because I sometimes use that Robin Uncle said me this and Shumi Babu said me this and also in the right part, the archives and research materials I follow. Right. So, uh, and then the actors and the survivors. Right. So in the left part is basically all the survivors and what the real people. So you'll get to know every details like what is the fiction and what is the non-fiction part at the end of the book. But when you're starting, I don't want to 
give you in the very beginning that this is fiction and then there is no point to make this work because it's not work is more like um, in a surreal way we want it to put so that you also go through the journey and go with the book read the text imagine yourself and then also see the images when you are seeing the images you can think about text when you are reading the text you can think about your own visuals to put there are some gaps also inside we tried to put there is also bon like all bonnie's work how actually she once read the film and she once read the book so, so this uh, yeah. the performance piece that's right in the end is is an actual performance piece that does this exist one? this yeah. one um, so it's the one where the gate poles open out as well right in the end Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is actually like um, the book is starting when you read the this book is starting with this image, the left one, right, yeah. the box. Yeah. And when you start reading, you will uh, see that I'm looking actually, you know, central part of India. I'm looking for a rep survivor, and I want to meet her, and then I want to just listen. But then um, it's confusing part that finally I meet her or not. Which is also not clear inside the book. But what you will get, you will get a letter inside here in the fold. Right. When you open the fold, you will get a letter. It's a letter is basically the person, the rape survivor, like whom I am looking for in the beginning of the book. So this book is starting with the same image and the same yeah. conversation, and it's also ending. And when this is actually the fold, and when it's open, um, my friend, she is looking at you directly. And then also you are reading the letter, because letters, I right. mean, the website. Which is an insert that comes it's an insert in, this in section. the fold. And then you can hold the letter, which is an original letter, and then you can read. Because again, like I did this reenactment because I don't personally, ethically, I don't want to put someone in a vulnerable position when they have uh, already a very bad memories. Right. So it's a confusion also, like I don't want to like, clear the many part of the book like finally i have met her or only i have listened from people and i i got the letter i got the letter from the archive actually not from her it's basically a police complaint uh, of her which is the booklet format mm -hmm. um but yeah so like part of it is fiction part of it is basically the letter, the letter right. is real but the someone who is looking at you is not the person but right. Right. She can be the person also. It's it's not necessarily like who is looking at you. The thing is like why she is looking at you, mm -hmm. and what is the reason behind it, and why I'm making this picture. Why this picture is important. Why she is wearing this uh, bird mask, and why right. she needed to hide her face, right. and why actually she is like so. Why she need, like it's like I think it's this is I think the question is not who is. I think the point is why. Why is more important rather who is inside the picture? Right, right. And yeah. and it seems, and I could be wrong about it, but it seems like this is almost like a performance mm -hmm. that's happening. And so this is a performance artist as well who we have yeah, she collaborated is, yeah, with. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is a part of her performance, or is this something that you guys then kind of? We made it in uh, like Sundarbon area. You like, made it in we travel like my friends traveled with me and then we met it's not part of any theater or performance like this is actually the intro work actually whatever images we made is basically the animal is made particularly for oh, this book right yeah, for this book right. yeah right i know we have a couple of questions even though we're at seven but uh, i think we can we can go on for another few minutes if, I, mm -hmm. would that be okay with you Shama? ah sure sure okay so, Somit Kundu, I'm starting from the questions in the chat actually. Somit Kundu wanted to say, how, how are you able to carry a studio set up to the location of the occurrence? Well, I don't carry a studio set up. I only carry a flash and my friends, like that, either the collaborators or the theater uh, actors, like either I am doing a reenactment or like, I'm working with a real person. So they actually come with me one assistant like for helping me in the flash and the camera. I don't use a huge light setup for my work. It's like one light or two light setup on the flash and camera. That's it, like a three, four people setup because I don't love to work because if you go then it is more like a filmy setup and the images will also come 
right they that way that yeah way. yeah um, he also wanted to know from where have you received most of your archive uh, i'm in, i'm assuming this is the material that's there in the book um, okay so i i traveled all the places and met many people there and then some people had the refugee certificate still some people don't have some people had an image of their dear one from like during that time so i made like more than 200 300 survivors and from their personal archives actually collected and used in my book so it's not from a particular place actually i found right uh, he also wants to know who your favorite film director is ah uh, there are many and it changes with time but like name few definitely um abbas kurstami so emir kustorikar's work filmmaker john abram not actor uh there is a like the filmmaker i love because they always work with a very low budget uh, production mm -hmm. and made a masterpiece from it and i love because their films are sometimes also mixed up with fiction and uh, surrealism and magicalism i don't love to use this particular word it's like first you can say like a fiction reality because they don't have the budget so sometimes they use the real location and real people to act and also they used actors some part of it and i always like fall in love with this kind of writers and filmmakers who only make films and writes for their own people not for the outside people like when i'm making a book i always i send the book already to malkangiri camp area and i always like looking for what they think after seeing the work and after that like i will think even if they think like okay we should have changed something then i definitely giving all the books that's because not all the books is given only few are like few of you from only if offset not if you if you were right so these things i think for important for me even if when i'm seeing films or reading a literature i always love when the regional people who only write or make films for their own people not for the western people like what the white people will think about our work i don't believe in this and i that's i think these are the directors i love when they make films there for own people but there are many like i can send a list later <laughs> okay we can add it to our huh. uh, our the page on our website that's why we can talking. give we can if the book, book is really bad then we can give free dvds with the book like one surprise <laughs> free dvd movie director like one of us the ideas to people huh. you know and <laughs> everyone will say the book is terrible yeah just give me the dvd the dvd ha huh. free uh sumit bhattacharya actually wanted to know what is more important to you the experience or a photograph of it i'm with you um okay um experience so for me i think for me photographs is basically a souvenir of a particular conversation every photograph because i don't shoot i never made a picture on streets or randomly visited a place and make pictures exhibits an assignment or something like that but in my particular work if you see all the images is basically somehow made after a conversation and when it is like um conversation it means like what i believe like i'm conversing with you like um, i'm conversing with anshika and then after the conversation i just want to remember our conversation so we made a picture of ourselves and this is actually my work this is actually my experience and this is actually i think about my work all the images i make, make is basically to remember the conversation i did with my collaborators Right. It's same for Jata. It's same for Full Moon. It's same for Mojave. It's same for the next work I'm doing. It's same for every work. It's basically the conversation we all wanted to remember. Is and we all do this. Even if in Instagram, Facebook, I think we all do the same practice. But that is actually I do in a serious way. Make a book and sell. But right. like you know, <laughs> right. people can give in free Instagram. But I know I want to share my experience with money. Anyway. Fair. Fair. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and no, i some, think that becomes an experience in itself also you know the collective kind of chronicling of these conversations into hmm. a singular hmm. form 
Yes. Someone asked the hungry tide brain and inspiration for this also. Yes. Um, no, I read hungry tide, uh, but hungry tide is not about that. You remember when you when we seen the work for the huh. first time about some element. Yeah. So Anu also Anu's research, like who also wrote for my book. So Anu also like it's also written in hungry tide that Anu was part. But I made Anu to different um, like incident. Uh, but Anu also part of that Hungry Tide book. She also helped Amitabha Ghosh. That is mentioned in the book, like, too, because Anu also doing the research and she is coming from a family, like, like one of German and parents. So Anu and actually she, helped you out with all the research that exists. Anu helped Amitabha Ghosh with the research, but Anu actually, we collaborated. So there are other academics who also helped me with research. And then I traveled all the places and then this collaborator also helped me. Anu helped me uh, with uh, many things to read in the beginning and she also like I'm really thankful to her like she agreed to write the research part about the Morit Chapi massacre uh, but Hungry Tide is not um, actually the inspiration I read it later I like the book it's a really interesting book but my work is always I told you it's, it's, uh, it's not the interfiction but Hungry Tide is a fictional book but my work is always with the collaborators, like that person uh, I'm working with, and they are the heroes of my work. But yeah, Hungry Tide is definitely a very important book. In the first book, actually, where internationally someone mentioned about this massacre. So I think this book is very important, though it's not inspired in my work. But yes, this book is one of the most important. Uh, book about this massacre because the international uh, viewers or readers got to know about the first time in 35 right. years. Yeah, yeah. I would say not just the international, but in many cases maybe even outside of Bengal. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it's a, it's a Indian. Many Indians yeah, also. Yeah. Even if not forget about India, like the Bengal is a new generation. Like we were in 90s, so. I knew because my family came from Bangladesh, so they like discussed about this. But the many people like born in Calcutta were not from like right. Bangladesh part. So they never discussed and how they will know what happened in 79 or some incident. We already forgot about like 30, 40 years of the people who are um, like born in 2000 were now like 20 years old or something. No, they never discussed about it. So this book is important for them also to know about this incident because the Bengali book which was written is not available from 90s only because the government banned those books and now the writers mostly died so okay. most of the books are like out of stock this is the only book which is stock you can right. uh, like read yeah right uh Pritish Bali actually wanted to know how the people who you met for your research the victims of the violence how have they reacted to the final book Huh. That's what I'm waiting for. So I already sent the book. So as because they live in a Malkan case, I sent them in DTTC and then came back and then I, I'm trying another one. But they have seen the work. They have seen the PDF. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have seen like many people from the server base, they actually used my images as Facebook profile picture for many months. So it's like will be very happy at least. That's a pretty good validation. Right? Exactly. At least my <laughs> picture koi to Facebook me dala. Facebook me to gaya. Mera ilaba. Mera ilaba koi to mera Facebook me dala. Like usually I post everything my work, nobody <laughs> shared. So that's it. at least someone actually shared my like pictures, though most of the time without credit. Right. But it's their image also. So like forget the credit. Yeah, they reacted with the images. Um, Good, but the book, like in hand, I don't still know, but I'm just waiting. Well, you've just yes. got it like two, three ah. days ago. So ah, I like the book, it. the entire book is basically made two, three days back now. Mm -hmm. And I just came back from Delhi today. So this yeah. person, like if you see this uh, person, like I found in this transparent image and this picture actually, basically I found from the archives. Uh, the school teacher of Morichapu school and then I found him after 40 years here uh, Malkangiri. So he is terribly ill now and okay. he called me a couple of weeks back and that is why we were in a hurry to make this book and during this pandemic also because he said like maybe I will not be able to see your book 
and maybe I'm for the last time I'm calling you Shomu. But remember that remember our struggle and uh, tell it to the people. And um, doctor said like maybe I'll die in weeks, but um, just like bless you that you are doing something so that people will remember because it's the book. Always like Hungry Tiger is a very important book, but this is the only book where you can see the survivors, the yeah. original survivors of the incident. And that is why I think uh, somehow this book is very important for me as well, because these people are very old now. And so, but fortunately, uh, he's still okay. And I pray like he will be okay for more years and years. Um, so I'm just waiting the book reach this week and he will give me a call again and see what he thinks about the book. I'm just waiting for it. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm also eagerly waiting yeah. to know their reaction. Yes. Umayu is here and wants to know how can you get the book to Karachi? Uh, you can get the book in Karachi. Humayu, we have to get uh, to Delhi in order for you to get this book back. Uh, yeah, you can get it. I think you can order uh, if the courier is available. Definitely, it's available through Offset. I yeah, think I Offset mean, is also got, uh, we at Offset we have a bookshop where we are selling uh, Shomo's book. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right now it's only within India. The pandemic has a lot of other restrictions on shipping, and it's very unreliable. Um, yeah, but I, I think I want Humayun to come to Delhi to take this book. <laughs> I think that is better. Huh? I yeah. also want him to come to Calcutta. Yeah, perfect. Get signature. So, we'll, so he'll come to Delhi and then he'll come to Calcutta. We'll get to a do limited the edition signature, signature book. Huh? Signature <laughs> milega Calcutta. I can get that. Uh, uh, one more question actually is Sumit has. Uh, he wants to know when you start working on a project, do you think about what the final production will be? or later on while working? I think it's... Well, I always love to go with the flow, but for a particular project, I always thought about the book from the very beginning, because when I was discussing with the collaborator, the collaborator asked me, like, what do you want to do with this work? And after 40 years, this also the conversation start inside the book. What do you want to do after 40 years? And I always told them that I will make a book. I'll make a book uh, so that people will remember you, people. People will remember me that I was part of you. Just remember that I was with you at any time of your life to listen to these stories from you. So this remembering thing actually I want to do and there is I want to do the MOOC and I, I told them, I promised them I have the book. So for this project, definitely I thought about the book from the very beginning, but mm. I always love to go with the flow because I always believe it's not necessary because it's not school. It's not an engineering school that you have to be specific after four years, you have to get a job or anything. You can end with anything this installation this travel exhibition can book or just like talk like 100 talks arranging 100 talks and you're inviting your collaborators that can be also work that can be in performance it's not important i don't believe in this that have to make something uh, when you are working you can do anything like you can also make a whatsapp audio conversation and then start sharing with your contact list and then the people who will get it they will also start sharing the contact list what is the sanji people are now doing their it sales mm -hmm. so uh, so the work can be anything so i personally don't believe like to think anything in the beginning go with the but flow. i know that after making this book you are now curious and also mm -hmm. looking at uh, at working on work for for another project that already exists right yeah so jatra like jatra we are thinking actually bonali is more interest to make the book from jatra work because both are related full right. moon i don't want because uh, this is the kind of a journey of our friends and i think the journey is not ended now because we all are now in 30 just entered 30 mm -hmm. we want to like see ourselves more 10 years and when we're in 40, then we want to look back what we made picture when we were in 25. Because Full Moon I did start in 2013, 14, seven years okay. ago. I was uh, my friends and I was like 23 sometimes. So Full Moon, definitely I'm not going to make him next year, maybe after a few years. When we'll, so I also always discuss with my collaborators, like what do you think, should I make mm. a book now or later? So my friends and we are not still convinced that the work is end. Mm -hmm. 
it's just a beginning, like six, seven years, nothing. But because we are our age and we are going through. But Jatra and this work is done because these people are like 80s and major like Jatra is I documented my, my own grand uncle died and many others also died. So one thing is like, why like keeping it for years? Like let's make a book so that, um, you know, like it's a for memory. Like people feel at least like part of them like who are still alive can see what is the outcome of the world. So we have not like still like we'll make it as because the pandemic situation, this book is kafi tha, like making this book. This in itself, I wanted to, I mean, uh, that can be a separate topic. talk, just making a book in the middle of During the pandemic. During pandemic time, huh? Or you know, like in February, March, when, yeah. like, <laughs> when you know, it was like nothing was there. there. Right. And even then, six months in isolation, we actually made the entire book. Like, right. Because of this pandemic and all, we stayed home and right. worked on the archives, transcripts, and like letters and all, and then start making the book. And within six, seven months, I think we were almost seven months, September, right? So, yeah, it's seven months because we were there in February, came back in March, first week. So in seven months, we worked like 24 hours almost, like every day. We are going sleeping after making the book and then wake up and then start because we have nothing to do. Like last seven months. And so, okay, let's do this. Chalo, that worked out damn well huh. for all of us even. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Maybe for Jatra, I think we're going to get Bernali also to join us in this conversation. Hmm. Yeah, and, uh, I think that will be very I think she's going to be the motivating force for that book. Hmm. Hmm. That yeah. would be quite her, her book actually. Yeah. My image is her book. We call it her book with your huh. images. Yeah. She's officially yeah. a publisher, even, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, maybe we'll have a chat with the publisher next time round. Yes. But until then, thank you so much, Shomo. Yeah, uh, it was really so nice talking. Yeah. Great to hear you and talk about your process. And uh, thank you everyone who did yeah. join in. Yes. Our, you, uh, our talk today and for this month and for the future months till December has been facilitated with the support of the Swiss Arts Council. Um, Prohil Vitsia has been very kind enough to give us a grant to continue doing these virtual talks and, uh, and create some kind of our own archive on authors and bookmakers from the region. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm super glad that we could have you here, Shomo, and, uh, so I just want to say something like uh, no, about the book. So you can in India, like you can always order in offset, but even if yeah. outside India, so like I already discussed with the DHL and DTC, they are like doing giving service outside India. So if anyone, they can write directly to Red Turtle Photo Book uh, Gmail .com. You want to put it in the messages. Uh, yeah, or they can the just find or they can uh, Instagram or Instagram. website se mil like in Mira website like it's He's given your website uh, and Udha you will uh, find uh, you'll find so if from outside India they can always order we will save and the book has stocks even if it is not like offset me I say like it is like out of stock if you see I think it's better they can mail you and keep right. it because we have enough stocks now like almost yeah. like four hundred books will uh, now be left, arriving just like the book is arrived so you can like pre-order, so I will send Ansika as soon right. as possible the books you and she can just write them. it to me. If you write an email, Even if it is out of stock open. in the cart, but they yeah. can write you and then you can forward the book. Yeah. Yes. But Humayu, we are waiting for you to come to Karachi. You can't. Ha, do Huma, particularly Humayun, like, um, yeah, he has <laughs> yeah. to come See, to Karachi. I knew it, he's written, will get in ha. touch to order. Hmm. But yeah, but thanks so much, guys. See Thank you next you. Friday. We'll have Arko Datto join us for huh. a talk. Arko, Arko lives in my neighborhood. Maybe yes, I should know. just, yeah, you should come at the background <laughs> based yeah. on your window and we'll have a chat with both of you again then. But Bye. thank you and good evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice Bye. weekend.